Hello, welcome back. I'm Dina again this week. Last week we talked about Adam and Eve and our takeaway question was, what are some of your favorite things that God created? I hope you were able to discuss this with your family and that you came up with some great stories. Today we're going to continue talking about Adam and Eve and today's story is called The First Sin. This is also taken from Genesis. And so the story begins. One of the animals that God created was very tricky, the serpent. The serpent was clever and sly and up to no good. Did God really say you can't eat the fruit from the trees in the garden? The serpent hissed softly to Eve. No, said Eve. God said we can eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden, except for the tree in the middle of the garden. God said not to eat from that one, not to even touch it. The serpent smiled, a sneaky little smile. Ha! God doesn't want you to eat fruit from that tree because if you do, you'll know everything. You'll be just like God, the serpent hissed in a sly way. Eve looked at the tree in the middle. Hmm, the fruit sure looked good. So she ate some, and she gave some to Adam too. As soon as they ate the fruit, everything changed. Adam and Eve became very embarrassed and shy. They sewed some leaves together, making some pretend clothes to try to cover up their bodies. They stood nervously behind some bushes. Then they heard God walking around the garden. God called out to them, Yoo-hoo, where are you? Adam and Eve hid. Hey, where did you go, called God. Adam peeked out from behind some vines. He said, I heard you and I was afraid. Why were you afraid, asked God. Well, I'm naked for one thing, said Adam, who was quite embarrassed, so I hid. I see, God replied. Who told you that you were naked? Adam said nothing. Did you eat the fruit from the tree I told you not to eat from, asked God. Eve gave it to me, Adam blurted out. The serpent made me, exclaimed Eve. He tricked me. God sighed. I told you not to eat from that tree. Because you have done what I told you not to do, life will be difficult for you now. You will have to leave this beautiful garden and work very hard to get the things you need. Now you will know what it is like to be unhappy and someday you will die. I made you from dust. When you die, you will become dust again. God made some real clothes for Adam and Eve and sent them out to the big world and God was with them everywhere they went. That's the end of today's story, but this week I'd like you to think about what kinds of hard work do you think Adam and Eve will have to do out in the world? Um, I'm anxious to hear some of your thoughts. We'll talk next week again. Have a great week. Thank you so much for letting us come and join you today for the end of our Sunday School lesson. Today, our Sunday School lesson came from the book of... Genesis. That's right, and it had some different people in it. Who were the two people in the story? Adam and Eve. That's right, and there was a really sneaky animal in the story, wasn't there? Snake. Oh, a slithery snake. And there was a piece of fruit, right? A yummy, yum, yum <laughs> apple. An apple. Oh, goodness. So we thought today we would make a fun craft to kind of help us remember this story. So we thought, let's make a slithery snake. So there are a few materials you will need for our activity. You will need some paper. We grabbed some different color of paper. We grabbed green and blue. You can grab whatever color paper you would like. You can even take white paper and you can decorate it with different patterns, patterns and stripes. stripes. That's right, even the... dots or whatever works for you. And cut it into strips, kind of like this. I'd say it's about an inch to an inch and a half thick. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna take these and you're gonna form them into a circle. Can you form this one into a circle for me, please? And then we're gonna take a piece of tape and go ahead and connect it together to make the circle stay. Now, as soon as we have one circle made, uh -oh. <laughs> that's okay. As soon as we have one circle made, can we show them our circle? Then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your second piece of paper. You're gonna put it right inside this one and we're gonna fold it over and close it too. Yeah, yes, of course. Okay, now we have two circles connected. What do we do with the third one? Can you hold it up so they can you see? Put it in. And then you do the same thing. Make it into a circle. And you connect. Ah. <laughs> do you need some help? Oh, mm -hmm. you got it. 
Go ahead and connect it once you hold it up so they can see what you're doing, though. And now, and now we connect it with a piece of tape. Perfect. Now, as soon as you have that done, you can keep going. You can make your snake as long or as short as you would like. The snake, I made a, a super long You're right, one. this is like a baby snake. This is a little tiny one. And you can use whatever color of paper you'd like. Now we did, we made a long snake, a super slithery snake. Let's see him, Lincoln. A slithery snake. There he is, he is so long. And we only use the two colors, but you can always use whatever works for you. Now, at the end, when you have all of your paper chain ready, then we're gonna decide where the head is. And here's our head. We're gonna use this blue part. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to add something to him. What a does he A tongue and eyes. Ooh, a slithery tongue or and, a slithery snake. And just so you know, snakes don't have noses. They only have nostrils. That's true. So to make your nose, I'm gonna make a long one here to kind of show you. This is bigger than I would use on our snake. We have a smaller one, but I wanna show you how we do it. So you take a piece of paper, and this one's pretty short when you think about how long we were using on our snake over here to make our chain. We're gonna use a short piece of paper, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold forward and backward. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna fold forward, just like that, and then I'm gonna turn it around, and I'm gonna fold backward. And then I turn it over, fold forward, and backward, and forward until I get to a little tiny, Oh, I almost have, an accordion like paper and then you can pull it out. I also have my own tongue. You're right. We have a little tiny tongue ready. That one's a little bitty, but we thought we'd show you with a big one first. And then as soon as you have your accordion tongue ready, you can attach it to your snake head. Like this? We're gonna use a piece of tape. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a little tiny here. Let me show you again. Here's our little bitty tongue. We're gonna take it and we're gonna attach it here with a little tiny piece of tape on top and stick him here, and now he has a slithery But he still tongue. doesn't have eyes. You're right, and then you can make his tongue stick straight out. Let's go ahead and draw some eyes on him. There he goes. Here's our snake. He has his tongue, and he has his eyes, and he, he is so He looks friendly, long. but he's really not. He does look friendly, but in the story, we know that the snake is the one who tried to convince Eve to eat the apple, right? So And Eve gave Adam an apple. Also. That's true. She asked him to go and bite it then too. So here is our super fun craft to help us remember the story of the first sin today, our super long snake. And you can make this at home just with some simple craft materials. What did we use to make this? We used paper. We used uh, paper. And, and a marker. That's right. And tape or glue, right? Those are all a lot of things you can find at your house to be able to make a slithery snake just like we did. Okay, we hope you enjoy trying to make this craft too. But before we go, let's say a quick prayer to finish our lesson. Can you help me by repeating the prayer that I said? Yes. Okay, let's put our hands together and bow our heads. Are you ready? Okay, dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For always loving us. For always loving us. Even when we make mistakes. Even when we make mistakes. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you could be here with us to help make a fun craft to remember our story. We hope that you have a great day and we will see you again very soon. Thanks. Bye. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Let's dive right into our lesson. So you just heard the story about Adam and Eve and sin. So that was, let's see, let me make sure I put this right. That was from Genesis chapter three, verses one through 24. So let's review real quick. Where are Adam and Eve living? They're in the Garden of Eden, you're right. And there was one rule they had to follow. They could not eat the fruit from one tree. Do you remember what it was? The tree of knowledge, yes. Now, do you remember in the story, every night God came to the garden and he walked with Adam and Eve and talked. Can you imagine that? Walking and talking with God? Well, all of a sudden, God knew that Adam and Eve had broken the rule. They'd eaten the fruit from the tree of knowledge. How did he know? When he came to find them, to walk with them, what were they doing? Do you remember? They were hiding. And when they came out of hiding, they had leaves covering themselves, kind of like a ba like bathing suits, right? Because all of a sudden they knew that they were naked. 
and they were embarrassed. God knew they broke the rule. So let's let's unpack all of this. So who encouraged Eve to break the rule? Who talked to her? Do you remember what animal? The snake. Mm -hmm. And the snake said, Oh, you won't die. And Eve saw the fruit, saw that it was good, and she she ate it. Now, did she have to? She chose to break the rule to eat it. What did Adam do? Did Adam say, no, that's, that's a rule that we're not supposed to break. That's the one rule. Did Adam say that? Nope. Adam ate it also. And that's how all of a sudden they realized that they were naked and they were embarrassed, so they were hiding. Now, do you have rules at your house? Mm -hmm. I have rules at my house and rules at school, different places. Now, at, at home, at your home, who makes the rules? Does your mom or dad or your grandma or grandpa or whoever you live with? Mm -hmm. Right. So, hmm, who made Adam and Eve? God did. So God was their father. So God made the rules. Now, at your house, have you ever broken a rule? When I was little, growing up, I broke a rule. Sometimes I still try my best, but sometimes I still break rules. We're not perfect. We break the rules sometimes, right? Now, at your house, if you break a rule, does mom and dad or grandma and grandpa stop loving you? They still love you. Now, Adam and Eve broke the one rule. Did God stop loving them? What do you think? God's their father. Did he stop loving them? No. He still loved them. So that's something important. No matter how bad of a choice you make, God will always love you. And mom and dad are going to love you too. So, everything we do in life is a choice. You can choose to make a good choice or a bad choice. So in this situation, Adam and Eve broke the rules. So did they make a good choice or a bad choice? Bad choice. Whenever we break the rules or make the bad choice, there's a consequence that happens. So let's see what those are. What happened to the snake? So in the story, the snake was talking to Eve and she understood. So as a consequence, what happened? Can we understand snakes? Nope. And when we see snakes now, where are they usually crawling? On the ground in the dirt mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say that we have a great relationship with snakes because sometimes we think of snakes and they bite right and then humans kill snakes that's what happened to the snake the snake now has to crawl on the ground and we don't like them they don't like us that's just the way it is for the snake now now what happened to Adam and Eve what where did they have to go well, they had to leave the Garden of Eden. They had to leave paradise. And the consequence was, in Eden, there was plenty of food for them to eat. We know that they took care of the animals, but we don't hear about them farming and growing all their food. It was there for them. It was provided. When they had to leave Eden, oh, all of a sudden, they had to grow their own food, and it wasn't as simple as put a seed in the ground, up. it grows. Mm -mm. They had to prepare the soil, they had to plant the seeds, then they had to wait for the rain, and then the temperature, there were so many things that can affect it, and farming is not easy, it's hard, it takes a long time. So now instead of having just food everywhere, they had to toil and work for their food. And then the consequence for women for Eve was when she had children, it would hurt, there'd be pain. So those were some of the consequences. Now the other consequence is the way our bodies are made, we don't live forever, right? We can get sick and when we get old, our bodies, they, they wear out. That's just the way life works and we die. Now, do you remember in the garden, God said if they ate from the tree of knowledge, they would die, right? 
And the snake's like, oh, you will not die. And they ate. Did they die? No. Hmm. Huh. But it wasn't as simple as that. When they left Eden, God actually had seraphim, which are like warrior angels, guard the gate so they couldn't come back in. Because do you remember in the story, God said that there was one tree that they couldn't eat from now. It was the tree of life. Now we know Eden had lots of trees. And we know Adam and Eve were able to eat the fruit from everything except the tree of knowledge. So if there was the tree of life there and they were allowed to eat that fruit, what do you think that means? It means they would have lived forever in the Garden of Eden, walking every night with God. But when they left Eden and the seraph and the warrior angels were there, they couldn't eat from the tree of life anymore. Hmm. So that says to me that God was telling the truth. If they ate from the tree of knowledge, they would die. When they left Eden, they had to leave Eden from since they ate from the tree of knowledge, they lost access to the tree of life. And that's why our bodies pass away. They wear out. We don't have access to the tree of life anymore. So, well, as soon as they ate the fruit, it wasn't like, you know, in, in um, Snow White, when Snow White eats the, the poisoned apple, it wasn't that simple. So the snake seemed to be telling the truth to Adam and Eve, right? Eat, you'll be fine. You'll just know everything. You'll be like God. Well, I think the snake lied. Because the consequence of Adam and Eve breaking the rules, really big consequences, they had to leave the garden. They were on their own, but God still loved them. He still took care of them. Remember, he made them close before they left. He gave them a way to eat, to have food for their bodies. He gave them a way to have children so that they could keep living, right? So that people could keep living. That's why we're here. So what I hope you can remember from this is there's everything we do is choices and there's good choices and bad choices. Even when we make bad choices, God and our parents still love us. We should really try to make good choices. So let's go ahead and close our lesson today with prayer, okay? Would you get comfortable? Maybe wiggle around a little bit and let's say a prayer, okay? Bow your heads, close your eyes if you want to. But just let's have a moment, okay? Dear God, thank you for this week. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for loving us no matter what we do. Please help us this week make good choices. Please help us take care of our friends and our family and everyone around us and just know that we are loved. Amen. I'll see you guys next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll have fun. <laughs>